Felidae. Felidae calculated the guild dues on a piece of parchment at her desk in the back office of the Vahantry's Northern Guild headquarters. She adjusted her glasses on the bridge of her crooked nose. The bifocals were too large for her face, but there were limited supplies in their isolated cathedral. A rattling knock on the flimsy wooden door to the office disturbed her line of thought. Before she addressed the interruption, Felidae shut her eyes. She wished to scratch down the last few numbers, but they shrank in her mind until she forgot them. Irritated, she set down her quill. What is it? Serval, one of the guild's finders, opened the office door and entered. He said, A message for you from headquarters. The courier passed me this while I was out working the fields. What could Crato want now? she asked. The guild dues aren't scheduled for another slice of the lunar cycle. Serval shrugged as he passed the message to her. Then he left the room and closed the door behind himself. Carefully, she reached into her desk drawer to withdraw a thin dagger that doubled as her letter opener. She cut through the Vahantri leader's symbolic wax seal. Felidae, it has come to my attention that great distress plagues the southwestern chapter of our guild. More than a quarter of their participants have been slaughtered while performing their conscripted duties. I have reflected on the matter at great length and I have concluded that a new strategy will be implemented for all guild chapters to adhere to. While I recognize that your chapter has enjoyed the greatest success due to your proximity to the soldiers' battlefront, and due to the smaller groupings of marching warfighters you have available to attack, I anticipate that the narrative will soon change. Larger crusade parties will cross the northern lands, and I fear your chapter will encounter the same concerns as our southern brethren. From now on, I require all assaults on the regional soldiers to be drafted into formalized plans that are to be approved by myself before they are to occur. I recognize that this may prevent us from seizing upon every opportunity that may present itself for our guild members to achieve their maximum productivity for our customer. However, as master of the guild, I declare it a necessary oversight. I likewise recognize the lull of activity this will lead to so I am officially authorizing the chapters to accept alternative work options in addition to this request. I have spoken to our customer, and they have agreed to this arrangement. They wish to prioritize efficiency with this assignment, and they will accept whatever method we deem best to satisfy their needs. Pass this information on to your subordinates promptly, so that we may preserve their precious lives. Regards, Guild Master Crato of Devor. Felidae rolled her eyes at the message. Crato probably thinks he's doing us a favor by allowing additional jobs. This has been the most profitable work we've ever had. At the rate we've been going, the entire chapter could soon move out of the desert wasteland into a city. Perhaps to Hisafe, or even to Wojet's sky capital. If we have to await his approval before we move, we won't kill another soldier. It'll be rotation still to save for a place large enough for all of us. Felidae considered the position before she decided what she wanted to do. Taking the candle from her desk, she set the letter ablaze and dropped it on the metal dish to finish burning out. Once the papyrus curled in on itself in a chunk of charcoal, she stood from her desk and left her office to enter the adjoining basement tavern. Her subordinates glanced up from their drinks and their deck of dragons. Lynx, stand for a moment, Felidae said. Lynx warily stood. His sharp jaw clenched. He waited for her to explain what this was about, and Felidae appreciated his skepticism. She didn't want her underlings feeling too comfortable around her. Lynx, I want to congratulate you and your fellow footpads for your success with the job. You've earned the greatest profit of the five regional chapters, and I wanted to share that with everyone. He relaxed his face and stood straighter, soaking in the praise. The southwestern chapter has failed. Many of their members have died without anything to show for it. Crato wants to approve future plans of attack. However, Wings, you and your group have proven yourselves. You still have full autonomy to strike at the soldiers using whatever method you choose. The rest of you are not exempt. Felidae looked around the room. Some of the stares she received were passive, and others were hateful. Aside from Lynx, no one smiled, not even his fellow footpads. 
Regular work will restart as of now, Felidae said, which elicited a few hushed comments. Ocelot, go tell Serval and Panthera that you can return to the cities and towns to find work once more. The job schedules will resume where we had left off. Ocelot rose from his seat and left to relay the message. I expect great earnings from you, Lynx. If we get another dozen heads, the profits may yield better accommodations for the whole chapter. Felidae nodded in encouragement. Hopefully the incentive will be enough. Link shook four arms with Felidae and proceeded to slap his groupmates on their backs. Felidae left the guild hall to return to her office. Waiting inside was Serval. So, Link's group is exempt from the request process, are they? His smirk slid into a simper. That's not quite what Kratos said. Do you want to get out of this hellhole or not? She asked. How do you even know what the letter said? The seal was unbroken. She glared at him. What do you want? I'm not going to be unreasonable. I want 10% of Link's group's earnings. They'll need 13 heads rather than a dozen. That's not so bad. She had made the announcement, and she had no intention to recant it. Despite Serval's cut, their group collecting heads was everyone's best chance for a better life. If Serval told Credo of her actions, she'd be on the run from the other Vahantry chapters for the rest of her life. Philidae said, to be clear, for 10% of Link's profits, you won't tell anyone. Take it or leave it. The longer you wait, the higher my percentage will be, he said. I'll take it. Now go find work before I change my mind and kill you instead. If only I could. Finders aren't so easy to come by as thugs and thieves. You'd take rotations to train a replacement for Serval, and I don't have time for it. I will be more than happy to get out of this hellhole he said, skipping out of her office again. Several days later, Lynx, Codcod, Margay, and Iriamote returned with three heads. Felidae went out to the hag at her cart to collect her manager's earnings from the kills. As the hag placed the gem in her hand, Felidae reluctantly considered how she would break them to split with Serval. Although, he was currently out in the fields, so perhaps he wouldn't find out. We might go back out. A few escaped, Lynx admitted. You killed more before. Before we had Ancilla as a distraction in Caracal. Why didn't they go with you? Felidae clenched her hands. They aren't part of my group. You only authorized my group to go, Lynx said, obviously. Of course I intended Caracal and Ancilla to go. I just didn't want to give Caracal credit in front of everyone. Go track down the others and take them with you. Your remote got stuck in the arm when we got these three, so we'll be down to five, but as long as we have your permission, I don't mind making more gem. Your remote, get some mallow for your wound, Holiday said. I expect to see more stock from the rest of you by tomorrow. The pickpockets disappointed me yesterday. They returned with fake helmets and didn't receive so much as shards for them. Yes, ma'am, Lynx replied. Holiday nodded to the hag and strolled toward their well. The guild member should easily take down any number of the newly recruited soldiers, especially if a defensive mage did not enchant their armor. A small smile crept to her lips as Ancilla and Caracal emerged from their quarters behind Lynx. Caracal narrowed her wrinkled eyes in Felidae's direction, but did not react further. Felidae pulled up the water bucket and drank it eagerly while staring her subordinate down with a side glance. So long as she brought in the soldiers' heads, Caracal could glare all she liked. And then, once they could purchase better accommodations, perhaps Felidae would hire Lynx to kill Caracal. <laughs>